Hello and welcome to Kilo Hearts YouTube channel. My name is Mouse. I am a Bristol based fun size pop angel and producer princess. And today I'm going to be taking you through a patch that I have created to give you pop producers a bit of a dirtier, darker bass sound. I like basses that go hard, I like them to be really strong and really full of character. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> At the very end of this tutorial, I will take exactly the same patch and turn it into a lovely texture as well, just with the addition of one extra modulator. Here we are in phase plant. So we've got our first panel here, which is where our generators go, second panel down here for modulators, and our lanes here for all of our lovely effects. I love wavetable oscillators. They are my favorite because I'm a very visual person. Yes, generally synthesis is visual anyway because you do get to see a lovely view of the wave, whatever you are working with and the shape of that wave. But for me, getting to see all of the different frames that are in a wavetable. So for example, this is our wavetable here and we are selecting our different waves. That helps me understand how the sound is changing and how the sound is being shaped by the shape of the wave. I chose myself first a lovely factory setting wavetable. I'm a singer primarily, so I went for the vocals and I've gone for the Uncanny Valley one. So that was what I started off with. Let's hear that just on its own. <laughs> It's fine, it's fine, it's not giving me anything particularly exciting, however, it is a great place to start. What I then did was I hit the unison button and this basically gives us the option to add number of different voices that are playing the same thing. So I have chosen five. I am a huge fan of a detuned synth. I absolutely love it. And you can create some really, really fun sounds here. The opportunities within this synth are genuinely completely endless. However, this is the sound I've gone for with unison switched on. We've got a little bit of detuning. However, the blend is only up just, I don't know, what's that? like six sixty percent one of my favorite ways to learn is to simply play around and just style everything up to a hundred and then work back until I get to a point where I like it so how I came to these settings was genuinely just like okay cool whack that right up let's give it a go <laughs> Well, I hate that, <laughs> so we can't possibly have that. So then let's just dial it back and see. And eventually, yeah, I got to the setting here, which I really like. So there we go. That is our first oscillator. Second oscillator, I have this lovely analog square wave. You'll notice that I did also change the balance of these waves together. So this is at 37% and this is at 20 compared to 100%. Let's hear what it sounds like now. But mouse, doesn't that sound like it's an octave down? Yes, it does, and that is not just the MIDI. What I've done is I've come over to the pitch control here and I've turned it down by 12 semitones or an octave. I really like it when a bass sounds really thick and it has a lot of character. So we've got something to really satisfy that primal need for sub. We have something really tasty and thick and juicy in the middle. And we also have some little extra, extra frequencies happening just to spice up the high end of the bass. Of course, we don't want to ever muddy our mix when it comes to what happens in the end product. So that's something to bear in mind. However, when creating something really powerful and punchy, that's what I like to do. Also, I'm not really sure what this is. I don't know, do people still do Salt Bay? Am I just not cool? Not sure, don't care. Anyway, also this is how I talk to myself when I'm producing. So welcome to my brain. Next, we have a lovely filter. So these are actually really easy to add. If you don't want to wait until you get to one of these effect lanes, hold down command on an Apple product, and then you can click here and it gives you the option to add some distortion or a filter in straight away before we have had time to even hit the output of our 
power generators. You'll notice that the cutoff is in orange, just like the pitch control of our two generators thus far. There is good reason for this, we will come to it later when we get onto our lovely modulator section at the end. I liked what I had, however I did want to add a little bit more spice. So this is where we come to something which is affecting more of the high end and the harmonics of the bass. I have added another wavetable. This is again a factory wavetable, um, just in saws. Yeah, it's a really simple defaced saw. And again, you'll notice that the frame is uh, highlighted in orange as well. That sounds fine. It's still not really giving me that much movement. Here we have, you can see the low frequency oscillators starting to work there. Um, I have it on sync for every beat of the bar and I have it um, on this lovely sine wave. You can see that once I've turned these on, I have these lovely dials appear and they correspond to the cutoff and the frame selector of this last wavetable oscillator. But let's now have a listen and see what's going on. Now you may have realised that, of course, these pitch controls are also in orange, which would indicate that they are being controlled by another modulator. We will come to that later on. I really hope you can't hear the uh, building work that is happening next to my apartment. If you can, then just pretend it's a layer of distortion and it was completely intentional. We come to this low frequency oscillator in our modulator section and yes, it is controlling the frame selection of this wavetable oscillator and also the cutoff of this filter. So let's just take one at a time. Let's listen to what this cutoff selection is doing. So all this is doing is changing the cutoff with time in our low pass filter. And it is doing this, this lovely movement. I, I very much gesticulate whenever I explain any sort of production term. <laughs> so this to me is giving me a lovely visual in my mind. <laughs> and that's what it's doing along with our low frequency oscillator. So what's that actually doing in terms of the music? Well, for me, it gives us these additional higher frequencies as the note goes on. So let's have another listen and try and understand that. So that's our filter, but what about our wavetable? Why have I chosen to modulate the frame selection of the wavetable? Well, A, because it sounds sick. <laughs> but also B, because I think it adds a lot of tonal quality. What I think is important to watch here is the frame, which is just this segment of the wave here. So that corresponds to this white line here. Now, as I showed you earlier, you can, of course, select your frame by clicking this white line and dragging it throughout the wavetable. However, that wasn't particularly important for me to do because I wanted to make sure it was modulated. So here we go. <laughs> So you can see how this sort of plays similarly to a sidechain. We have a rhythmic element now, which adds more harmonic quality to this last bass sound. What it is also important to mention is that I've also turned on glide. I am a sucker for a portamento. Wherever it is in a track, I don't care. I have turned the polyphonic element off. Um, I think the default was like before I can't remember but it's something you can drag it down though click and drag it down to one to get that monophonic sound so at this point what I would usually do is go and make another cup of tea and while that is brewing I will hit this little space invaders button which is just above macro 8 and uh, yeah now we move on to the lanes on the right side so there are, so many, there are so many genuinely fascinating things that you can do with the lanes. However, I either use them in a very simple way, but you don't need to. You can go really in depth, but for me, I didn't need to for what I wanted to create. What you can do at any point after a generator is hold down command again, and then you have the option to add a group, an auxiliary, a mix, or another output. So I've already got an output down below, but if I wanted another one, I could. And what that means is that I can just send this one wavetable to lane one, two, or three. What that means is I can only send one of my generators 
to one lane and I can have a number of effects plugins on that lane. And then I can send another generator to another lane with more plugins and then you can see how this can get big pretty quickly. <laughs> but what I have done is I've kept it simple because that's how I like to work and I've kept everything on lane one. So let's have a listen. I added some distortion first. <laughs> Nothing too crazy, quite a low drive, but right high in the mix. It's a fallback distortion. And then I added a flanger. <laughs> and now for my favorite bit, the phaser. <laughs> I love a phaser and a bass. I think it adds so much character. I also added a delay. Now, I don't typically put delays on basses, but I was just feeling a little bit crazy today. So <laughs> I guess it kind of gives it a little bit more space. So let's hear it in context. <laughs> There's another channel here with exactly the same settings and the same name, but it played something completely different. What I also like to do just to experiment even further, because that is always the approach when it comes to production for me and sound design for me, of course, is to take exactly the same patch, but try and do something completely different with it, just to see how much I can push this sound. Now, if that doesn't make you wanna answer your phone, I don't know <laughs> what will. I genuinely, while I was playing that example, I did have a little look down at my phone next to me, even though it's off. I was like, hang on a minute. And also I have an iPhone. None of the ringtones sound like that. It kind of, I guess it makes me feel nostalgic for my old brick phone that I had when I was a lot, lot younger. By the way, if you're looking at uh, my Logic plugins here, we have this compressor, which is just side chaining both bases to the kick and also the pads that I've got in here as well. I also have a lovely space designer, which is a fantastic Logic stock plugin. All I have added is another modulator, modulator number two, and that is all that has changed. And of course the actual pitch of the MIDI. But with this second modulator, we have three dials now and aha, now when I hover over with my mouse, you can see that these pitch controls are highlighted because that is what we are changing with this second modulator. So I have kept all of the effects the same. It is literally just this being added. With arpeggios, what is changing ultimately? It is pitch over time. And that is how we can control the pitch of these oscillators with a low frequency oscillator. So with every 30 second note, we have a change of pitch. This sound, again, I was feeling particularly inspired by early noughties pop. Um, Timberland is obviously one of the best producers of all time. Um, and he did sample Acid Jazz Evening, which he sampled for Do It by Nelly Furtado, which was one of the most influential albums for me as a child. I got it for like my eighth birthday or something. Maybe I was younger, I can't remember. And I just played it on loop on my CD Walkman for months. So that song and also AO Technology by 50 Cent and Justin Timberlake, which is also a banger. Anyway, so as I mentioned, I was using that as inspiration and I wanted to create something really buzzy as a texture. So I have modulated the pitch of my generators with time. And the way I've done that is I've done that in a square wave pattern. However, I'm gonna be completely honest with you because there is no gatekeeping in music production. I wish I had just opened that folder because <laughs> there they are, arpeggios everywhere. I didn't notice, <laughs> so I was drawing in my own when I didn't need to. There's a lot of things you can do there, but let's go back to my classic square. If you 
like this tutorial and you are looking forward to more content from the Kilo Hearts YouTube channel, do make sure you subscribe. Or if you love the sound of this tutorial itself, then come and follow me on YouTube as well. My channel can be found in the description below and on it I tend to post drag breakdowns, production videos and a lot of behind the scenes content to what I'm up to. Of course, as well, if you'd love to hear what I've been making, then do come and check out my music. You can find that also in the description below. And most importantly, if you create anything which was at all influenced by this tutorial, I would love to see and hear it. So do post a little bit on social media, just film a little snippet of your track or whatever it is you're working on, I'd love to see. And make sure you tag me, it is at She's Called Mouse on all social media platforms. But until then, I hope to see you in my next video over on my channel or getting involved more with Kilo Hearts and having a go at making your own patches in Phase Plant. Enjoy! Oh, yeah,